Brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's get on with the webinar. So, maybe I'll break up the uh, the usual tradition here of starting with the currency markets, and I'll switch sway straight over to the Dow, which obviously caught to the headlines last week. Um, I'm <laughs> drawing a lot of rectangles on uh, on my chart for the moment. Um, I kind of like it as a tool at the moment. I just kind of tend to just to mix it up. I'll use sometimes the horizontal line tool, sometimes the trend like you know diagonal sloping trend line tool, and sometimes this. Um, you know, these rectangles actually quite nicely kind of denote what levels the market's paying uh, attention to as far as kind of like a, a zone. And obviously at the moment, we've all got our eyes on what are the pullback zones here for the uh, for the stock market. And so this is a daily chart for, for Wall Street. So obviously you can see the, um, you know, um, there's the uh, falling off a cliff that we had last week, the kind of massive volatility. Um, and as we stand at the moment, attempting a little rebound. So do we have a double bottom here? Um, certainly the potential for it. So you can sort of see based on, if I zoom out a little bit here, you kind of see um, what the market's been trying to do here. You can sort of see that in terms of its um, highs and lows and terms of its opens and closes, it's basically been respecting these kind of uh, pullback zones uh, that it used on the way up. So. Um, you know, consolidation, obviously, at this point in time, managed to break out, went a lot higher, and now we're all the way back there again. So, obviously, 10% off the highs, which everyone officially knows to be a correction, obviously. So, um, there's a good guide point, you know, do we hold the sort of 10%-ish area, or do we roll over some more? If we do roll over some more, obvious guide points below there would just be 15% and uh, the 20% marks um, in terms of how badly this thing can turn out. Uh, I think the default assumption for everyone at the moment is that it um, can pan out okay. Probably we've got some pretty choppy trading ahead. Uh, one thing to look out for this week is the US inflation stats. I won't go too much into the uh, the fundamentals behind the whole situation, but that, just look out for the inflation stats on your calendar because a lot of what kicked this off, uh, a lot of what's getting the credit for kicking this off at least, is uh, higher inflation expectations for the US and its implications for, for rate rises. So obviously we've got the inflation data out this week. Um, so, um, you know, at the moment uh, we on, on this Wall Street chart, we're, we're probing into the top of this pullback zone. So we, we look like we've held this area for a couple of times. So, okay, so the, um, the buyers have stepped in in this area. Uh, where do the sellers potentially step in again? Um, well, it looks like they've already kind of uh, given up on this particular pullback zone. This is quite a tight area of support, which has shown a fair bit of interest in terms of the closes. For me, um, the real test will be once we, we obviously have two spike lows down here. If we get another little spike high up here, then you can imagine we'll roll over at least into the middle of the zone again. So watch out for, I think it's 25, uh, 25,000 thereabouts, if I uh, put the crosshairs in here. Um, well, no, it's actually more, it's actually more, it's 25, 300 would be kind of the, the middle of this this trading zone here. 25,300, um, pretty much where we bounce to, you know, that's obviously going to be a big kind of test area. And, and why did we bounce to that exact point? Um, well, I think it relates to this little minor pullback we had for a few days on the way up. Um, so look out for that. Obviously, people will be pulling up their Fibonacci retracements on this pullback as well. So look out for those. If we do pop a little bit higher, doesn't mean we're out of the woods. We may be going for a bigger retracement before we roll over again. You can imagine that people are going to be getting pretty nervous about taking their profits as we creep up, um, as uh, they fear that you know the thing just can't sustain itself. So that that's where we're at at the moment. Is that um, I suspect it's going to be choppy for a while because no one's quite got the the nerve to hold on to the trade, either to the top or the downside. Now, uh, if I move over to the other indices, it's a, a similar kind of story. Um, so, not so much boxy stuff going on here, but you can see we had this rising trend line in the FTSE. We basically had the um, the 7600 as the as the breakout, pulled back, tried to bounce off the break area, and obviously had a couple of pretty soft days, and it's been pretty nightmarish ever since. Um, we've come right down to basically the key seven six nine hundred slash seven thousand area, which has been support for if I just 
take you out to sort of um, the monthly chart here, you can see for how long this zone has been significant for the FTSE. Um, it, you know, these, this high over here, these highs here, these highs all through here, and obviously we're pretty much pulling back to, we pulled back to that zone again. So you can see why the market snapped up again. Um, obviously didn't quite get to exactly those lows, but into that kind of long-term demand area. So um, we've had the break, the long-term breakout. We've had a bit of a snapback lower, but has the market just overreached to the downside? And are we in fact getting kind of a, a almost like a false break back down through that long-term support? and then building a base for, for pushing higher again. I think that probably is the most likely uh, result here. Um, but obviously, we've got to be open to the idea that we could just roll straight lower and kind of accept more of this kind of rangy uptrend that we've been in, and maybe we get a pull back down here somewhere to the 6,000 mark. But let's get down to more down to the business end of things. Um, we've not caught up quite as much as Wall Street, but you can see that there is that kind of uh, spike double bottom here. I think we've got a bit more, we're basically in the middle of this trading range uh, of last week, um, all kind of encapsulated within that big sell-off day on Thursday. Um, so my, my feeling is that we probably do go up to test those Thursday peaks up in and around this trend line again, but just be savvy to the fact that at the moment we're middle of the range. So if you're buying up to the trend line, fine, um, but you know, we certainly can chop down to the bottom of the range, so it's difficult buying in the middle of this trading range right here. Um, but I think given how oversold we got, we're getting a bit of a kind of rebound here, we can certainly make it up uh, to basically this this kind of area of support, which you can see was support multiple times, proved to be resistance. But it's, no, it's not clear that we'll be able to get through it, but we can probably, with the high volatility, get a quick smash through it before maybe we roll over again. It's, um, it's certainly riskier trading at the moment, but um, you can get bigger moves in a shorter period of time, which obviously has its has its benefits for for trading um, if we switch gears to Germany you kind of see here um, that this was the big long-term breakout area that we failed for the first time failed again for a second time so obviously that doesn't bode especially well um, but this is where we pull back to this being the low here and then I think relates to this peak back over here as is kind of the support so again we could dip into this support box, which we've only just kind of got to the top of. Um, you know, maybe you could argue that these two kind of overlap. If you've got the, the peak here and the pullback here, if it's more about this zone, putting back to that old height, uh, then obviously that kind of correlates to there. So we've already pulled back once to this zone, pulled back again, made it. So again, good chance we can push a little bit higher from here because it is a significant support zone. Um, but uh, I'm not... Um, uh, I'm seeing a little short-term bounce, perhaps over the next couple of days, but I'm not confident that we can't, um, you know, see lower lows from here. So, if you're looking for signals for me to just outright buy the dip for for new record highs, certainly could happen, but to my mind, um, it's not altogether clear that's going to happen yet. Um, obviously, if we do head lower in terms of the DAX or the Germany 30, this is a pretty, pretty clear-cut cluster of support back here that we kind of um, were in quite a tight range for a while before we broke out into a nice uptrend. Um, so naturally, that would be an area to look out for should we head lower. Uh, that's around the 10,800 mark. And I didn't really say the same thing for the other indices. So if I quickly jump back to Wall Street, um, I think you all saw it there on the chart. But again, this was actually an instance where maybe you go out to the weekly chart and you can see that these little weekly pullbacks have been what the market's been paying attention to on the way back down. So if it does head lower, um, to me, this 22,200 um, where the zone starts and probably ends down here at this sort of 21,600, it's quite, quite a big zone. Um, looks tiny on a weekly chart and a big uptrend, but actually it's a few hundred points involved. Somewhere in there, I'd imagine would be a place that um, the market could find renewed support if we get another sell-off. So let's switch gears back to, to currencies here. Um, currencies could be interesting going forward because we hit this 125 level in the euro, and you can kind of see, so we're in, we, um, we, we kind of curved out, broke out here into an uptrend. We were supported by the 20-day moving average, but we have rolled through it. 
this was the resistance we broke out obviously we came back treated the old resistance as support broke to the top side that resistance held we rolled over taken out the support um, and obviously for me we're, we're going down to head to test this 2160 area it would be the natural thing that I expect to happen um, but if we again fail at this 23 somewhere in this zone uh, to me it makes sense that we drop again down into somewhere in the next zone down here um, and 25 I feel like it is a, a fairly significant uh, resistance maybe we've had enough of a pullback from here we, you know we've come within this zone we've not broken out of this support zone yet um, so we you know we, we're stabilizing a little bit it seems like so potentially we, we get a chance to pop back through the 20 day moving average but I'm inclined to think that even if we do get a, a little rally up here uh, we may struggle around the 20 day moving average again because it just seems like maybe the dollar is um, uh, is showing a little bit of strength here switch gears to the pound um, the pound uh, potentially looks even a little bit softer here because um, it was just that much stronger out of the gate on the way up um, so we had that big rally out here through that resistance level pushed out to the top side same thing where we had the kind of um, uh, resistance here rallied up didn't quite get to it basically pulled back to the 40 mark instead of that of those old highs rallied up double topped the same as the euro um, and then we've broken through that uh, double top neckline and we've dropped down through that sort of very minimal little pullback support down here um, you could argue that maybe it's uh, what's going on maybe use my arrow maybe it's more like this pullback down here that the market's reacting to at the moment so we're within that zone uh, but to me it seems like we'd want to go down test the breakout area so on the longer term chart with that that breakout area starts at the 136.50 and you've got that smaller zone within it so just looking at that old high there maybe we just need to come back and test it or somewhere within the zone so if you want some more specific areas where the market could pull back to then maybe just this little daily pullback area here um, so down here rather than that 136.50 which is the an obvious area everyone will be looking out for but just just a nudge below it which is kind of where these highs finish back here uh, at 136 pretty much could be where sterling's headed before the buyers come back in again still overall generally a decent sort of uptrend I'd say just based on a weekly ba on a weekly basis we've had a bit of a, a bearish looking candle it's, it's hard to imagine that the pullback is done after a fairly hefty looking candle like that so um, okay on to, on to dollar yen uh, so here this is pretty much our, our trading zone in, in dollar yen it's obviously basically just that 108 up to 114.50 um, a lot of people expecting it to rebound back up to 114.14 again obviously that would be a fair assumption for the range to me it's starting to look a bit um, a bit soft which would obviously be the exceptions to the rule of the dollar recovering a bit um, uh, but that is also potentially a bit of a worrying sign in terms of the stock market because you you know there, there can be a correlation a positive correlation between dollar yen and the stock market but what you've seen is basically this is the range again but seen a bit more clearly on a daily chart broken down to the bottom of the range sort of retested at once bounced back to that old uh, support turned resistance came down tested the range again held it but not too convincingly um, so the fact that we've sort of uh, you know we've had to kind of come down to this area one two three little fract uh, four fractals down here at the moment uh, not getting any kind of solid ability to rebound similar situation to over here suggests to me maybe we need a little drop down at least down to the bottom of the range and maybe we actually break out maybe we actually like drop to the the downside here on dollar yen um, which would be a sort of general risk off scenario where maybe the stock market drops again and um, and Treasury yields head higher uh, switching gears to the metals market we've obviously had a bit of a pullback in gold let's remind ourselves what we're kind of dealing with here this is the inverse head and shoulders pattern that we've tried to break through didn't pull it off basically last week and we've um, the, the week before last even um, 
and then headed lower last week. To me, there's still a chance here. We're just pulling back from quite a hefty level of resistance, even if you're not paying attention to that inverse head and shoulders. Obviously, we've got multiple highs in this area uh, between 1350 and 1400. It's just uh, the market's not going to just breeze through there in one stroke. Um, and we'd already had some decent gains off the low. You know, we'd put in a lower low, and we just rallied straight up to the, the long-term resistance. So it's always going to be a bit of a tough job to get through there first time around. Um, so we need to kind of come back, pull back, regroup. For the moment, you can kind of see the order of things here. We rallied out, pulled back, made a new high, pulled back to that old high, rallied up, failed to break out, um, made a lower low drop down to that old low here and that's where we're dealing with at the moment um, that could be the end of it but it doesn't look too convincing at the moment in terms of candlestick patterns we've had a couple of long wicks um, but at the moment we're failing again at that level the 1325 mark which has been that kind of pivot level so I kind of by the end of today if this is just looks like a failure at 1325 to me that's a pretty good sign that we're probably heading back lower um, into this kind of bigger, longer term zone. And it's around this 1295. It's not quite 1300, although obviously the headlines will about be about gold dropping below 1300. But, uh, and that is the big number really, but actually the number that seems to, the price has been reacting to more solidly has actually been like 1295. Um, so if you pull out to the weekly chart, you can kind of see a bit better. Basically these, these peaks through here and this peak here um, and obviously that actually quite nicely matches the 20 week moving average as well. So maybe we get a little drop down to 1295 through the 1300 mark, gather up some, some more support, some more buyers before gold has another run at that um, inverse head and shoulders pattern. Oil's been having a, a rough time of it. Um, to my mind, just more selling off. Yes, we have had a build up inventories, which didn't help, um, but obviously a bit of a risk off scenario. Not a surprising that both oil and uh, the S&P 500 had their worst week in two years. So you can sort of see that there's obviously a bit of a bit of correlation going on there. Um, we did talk about that uh, potential head and shoulders pattern. It has worked out fairly beautifully. Um, we are opened up below the bottom of the neckline and we've plunged all the way down. Um, to my mind, we've obviously rallied off a little bit off the lows, uh, but this is the key support down here at um, at 61 so maybe we get a little test of 61 before heading higher from here but if we do see some reversals from within this box actually that may be all that we need um, uh, yeah but pretty pretty oversold um, you know obviously a bit of kind of change of pace here in oil <clears throat> maybe we get a rebound off these off this support zone because it has because it was capturing the price for quite a while here um, but we have dropped through into what looks to me more like a correction phase. We've only had one leg lower, so it makes sense for me to have one more leg lower. So if you are buying the dip here, um, just be a bit cautious. Can't imagine that we're heading straight up to 70. We probably struggle around 66, uh, which is this little pullback zone here and the, the 50 day moving average. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to call it a day there, chaps, uh, chaps and chapesses. Uh, thank you very much for attending today. Good luck with trading for the rest of the week. Um, it's going to be some price moving out there, so um, you know hopefully you can take advantage. It's going to be one of those where you know you you know you can place in the trade. Uh, it's not always going to be the most optimum area. Um, you may get stopped out a bit more frequently, but have the stops in there just to protect yourself. And um, and hopefully the market can blow off in in the direction of your trade because there is that there is that price movement potential there. All right, cheers everyone. Have a good one. Jasper signing out.